Hey folks, Mel the Train Tutor back in the studio and back with my mate Frederick Phillips. Hello. Now we're back with a colour guide sort of painting video and we're back in our oceans. Anyone who's been following the channel will know over the last sort of six, twelve months we've done quite a bit of colour stuff and we've done lot, quite a lot of ocean stuff and we're slowly wrapping it up. Over this time we've messed with resin, we've messed with, with Asher. Yeah, with you we've messed with resin tints, we've done beaches as well. Yeah. And in this video, we're gonna be looking specifically at two different types of oceans, cold and warm oceans. Now there's lots of different oceans and Fred's gonna fill you in because he's done his research. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we've got two boards. Yeah, that have been grayed out with a Halfords gray. Yep. Yeah, and so Fred, what's the battle plan, mate? Well, first of all, uh, we'll start with the you know the the, the logic of, of everything. I think it's probably the best way to go because you know the different oceans around the world are different colours. Um, you've got basically um, you've got the North Atlantic and the North Pacific, which is one entire temperate zone as it's called yeah, yeah. water. Then you've got the South Pacific and the South Atlantic, which is the tropics. And yeah. And on top of that, you've got um, the Arctic and the Antarctic, obviously, the polar regions above and below. So when you're drawing, these are these lines here, aren't they? These sort of, these regions. That's right, yeah, the, region, the, the, uh, the, the regions of the oceans, um, which actually tend to um, run up the west coasts, coasts and run away from the east coast of the continents. Right, okay. uh, That's because of the, you know, the, the, the shift of the earth as the earth is Yeah, as the spin. Centrifugal spin, yeah. Um, so basically, the different colours of the oceans are caused basically by the organic material that's in them. Um, okay. Like, uh, surprisingly enough, and totally counterintuitively. So it's not like the sand or the sun or anything. I mean, it's, it's got to have a factor, but it's, it's that, the organic stuff. That, that's true. Actually, to, to really put it in a nutshell, basically there's, there's a um, number of things I've written down here that, that affect the colour of the water wherever you are. And one is the sky or the time of day, yeah. which is kind of obvious. So we're going to do an optimal you know, middle of the day, time of day. For yeah, go for mid-range and then, you, you know, yeah. if you want to adjust it to a, a late night or an early morning thing, you can adjust it yourself. But we'll, we'll stick with the mid-range on the sort of day times. As a starting point, yeah. The second uh, factor is season. The season, well, we're going to obviously, again, use the optimal season of the middle of the year, which is going to be, I guess, the summer. Um, the third is the depth of the water. That does affect, actually, um, the colour of the water. Obviously, the deeper it is, the deeper the colour is going to be. Uh, in the shallows, the water tends to be a little paler, and I'll illustrate that in the photograph in a few minutes. And the fourth uh, factor is the zone, what, what zone the, the water is in, whether it's uh, uh, Arctic, whether it's temperate zone, North Atlantic, North Pacific, or whether it's tropical zone, which is the South Atlantic, the South Pacific, and, so, and the Mediterranean as well. Uh, right, because of obviously the Indian Ocean too, uh, that's in the South Pacific. Um, so basically, what happens is, is there's actually a physiological, biological, I should say, reason for the, the different colours of the different waters, as caused by something called a the thermocline, which is about 50 metres down below the surface. There's a, a, an area below which nothing can go, or most organic material can't go because a lot of things can't go because um, it's too cold. So the, the, the sunlight only penetrates 50 metres, 160 feet down below the surface. Below that, it's that's the thermocline level below that level uh, it's a lot colder and few things can survive in the in the colder temperatures so what happens is as in the north atlantic and temperate zones which is very rich in nutrients as they die and fall down through the thermocline down to the bottom what happens is we have something called overturn in the winter as the surface of the water cools down in the cooler temperate zones in the winter as the, as the surface temperature cools down the water gets denser and it sinks as it sinks, it takes everything with it down to the bottom, but it also brings everything up from the bottom up to the top. So that means that throughout the year, the, the temperate zones are extremely rich in, in, in organic material for one reason or another, either because it's there in the summer and it's, it's, it's you know, flourishing, but in the winter it's dying and then it's been brought up by the overturn from the bottom. So that makes the temperate and polar zones of the, of the oceans a lot greener and greyer. The water is a lot greener and greyer because it's full, full of organic material. And um, so what you're talking there is you're talking sort of the, the North Atlantic, heading into the Arctic and that sort of thing, and, and down below, that's North the Atlantic, sort of areas. Yes, the North Atlantic, North Pacific, and the southern um, southern part of the Arctic areas are also extremely rich as well. So so you're talking about everything like off the coast of Norway, Europe. So top and bottom of the, of the globe, if you're imagining. 
Yeah, the, the sort of oceans. Yeah, the, the Arctic, the, the Arctic and the Antarctic, obviously, uh, were right at the top and the bottom. Then you've got like a, a, a an intermediary zone in between those, and then you've got the you've got the uh, North Atlantic, which is temperate, and the North Pacific, which is temperate, and the South Atlantic and the South Pacific, both of which are tropical. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got the Mediterranean, the Indian Oceans, and the and, and, and subtropical sort of areas as well, the, of the South Pacific. Right, okay. Um, Just to cut in very quickly, yeah, yes, you can hear my compressor. We're going to be using a bit of spray water so Fred can work the colours a bit longer than normal. Yeah, so just ignore that for the time being, guys. Right, so, so with that in mind, best way of tackling this is very much like our previous painting video where me and Fred are going to work on different panels, yeah, and then I'll put them together afterwards. It might seem a little bit clunky and cluttered, but it's the best way we can do it and get this information over to you. So, we're essentially looking at cold and warm. Cold and warm, yes. Okay. And again, of course, we're going to use cold and warm colours to convey that. Okay. Uh, also, playing into the fact that, you know, if we're doing the North Atlantic, North Pacific or Arctic waters, then it's going to be greener and greyer than, than the blue that you would get in the Mediterranean right, okay. or, or the Indian Ocean. So, uh, should we start with that one? Yeah, so, starting off with North Atlantic, mm. yeah. Uh, we've got a white palette there so you can see the colours. We've got a greyed out sheet here. Right, Fred, which colours are you thinking for the North Atlantic? Okay, so for the North Atlantic, we're obviously going for cooler colours and greener colours, more organic colours. Okay. So we're going to keep the warm colours to one side and use these, that's a raw umber, so that's a, a, a cool brown, yeah. a greenish brown. So we've got raw umber. Yeah, a cool brown or a greenish brown, as Fred says. Yeah, that's or a Van Dyke brown, I believe. <laughs> Van Dyke brown is, is also a good one. Cerulean blue, which is French for sky blue. <laughs> is that sky blue, right? Sky okay. Blue. <laughs> uh, which is a greenish blue, and we've got actual green, sap green. Yeah. Uh, these are all cool colours. Mix them together. We might also need a little bit of black for the depths. This does yeah. depend on how deep you're going to convey the water. Now, you've got something called continental shelf. Yeah. That is caused by the fact that the waters at the seas now are 400 metres uh, deeper than they were thousands yeah. of years ago. So that's actually filled up a lot of the land. So we've got something called a continental shelf, which means that the land goes out some distance before it goes off into a trough. Right, okay. goes into depths. So obviously, if you're doing like uh, coastal waters, then you're going to have a, you won't need black. Yeah, okay, so you're uh, definitely yeah. lighter because uh, of that coastal shelf. Because of the coastal continental shelf makes the water shallower and therefore a lot lighter and not, not as dark. Once you go past the continental shelf and the, the Atlantic uh, trough, you know, where the yeah. water gets a lot deeper, then obviously you're going to underpin it. So that, that has that 50 metre light penetration thing, isn't it? It's got to do with that as yeah. well, yeah, yeah, definitely. Because uh, the, the sunlight only penetrates so far. It penetrates a little bit further, obviously, in tropical waters because the water's got not so much stuff in it. Ah, it's yeah, because it hasn't got the tropical waters don't have the algae life and therefore they're clearer. Yeah, there's, there's a lot less going on in the tropical waters uh, and you can actually get like a, a, an ocean desert. Is that why we see what yeah. you call it, tropical waters as being clearer? We always see, yeah. you know, when yeah, we're in the med and that sort of stuff, yeah. you know, oh, look how clear it is. Exactly. And it's actually yeah. because yeah. It, algae isn't living it and the, all this bacteria and that sort of stuff actually isn't in it. There, there's certainly more in the Mediterranean than there is in the more <coughs> in the more open tropical waters, but nonetheless the same thing applies. So yeah, the Med is definitely a bluer colour for that simple reason that there's a lot less stuff floating, a lot less krill, phytoplankton, all those kinds of things right, that you okay. get in the in the open oceans and the temperate zones. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well I think we're learning lots today. I love little sessions like this. Right, I think the best thing we can do now, Fred, is let's mix up some base colours so our guys have got the base colour to start off and then we can talk about highlighting and that sort of stuff. Okay. Well I'll always start off with a mix of well we'll start off with a little bit of pure colour for each one. Okay. <coughs> So black, making the cerulean blue. Yeah, cerulean blue. Cerulean. Hmm? Uh, it's funny with that. Yes, French for I believe it means sky actually. Sky blue. Oh, yeah, I did say it was a bit bitty. Don't <laughs> really squeeze that. No, forgetting. You sure? Go on then. Come on, don't, don't knock your wrist, mate. You've got a strong grip with me, probably. And then, of course the green as well. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> well, I was expecting that to come out. Yeah, I was hoping that. <laughs> I need some watch colour. I need some Galleria Raw Umber, not this stuff. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're going to leave the white for the moment because this is going to be a. Um, I'm going to work these wet into wet. The white can go on dry, dry wetter, wetter. Okay, so we're working for the yeah. for the base coats on this and for the basic details. We're going to be working wet. Leave it to dry and then go in for for the highlight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to use this as a medium brush as a mixing brush. Okay. So we'll start off with the blue. Yeah. Let's say say we're going to have a deeper area going to uh, more towards the continental shaft, yeah, yeah. more towards the paler area. So we can start off with this. Right, so you are literally going straight in, blue, black, yeah, throw a bit of brown in there, and a bit of green. Yep. Now I've got to put them together so that they form a base coat here. Are we going to have enough paint to actually cover that? Uh, it will go quite a way, I think. Well, he knows better than I do. Uh, I don't normally use acrylics for base coat. I normally use house paints right, because of volume yes. and that sort of stuff. That's right. Yes, yes, of course. Now we can put this on in a half covering way. Right. Okay. I need a bit of a spritz on it. I think I'll to just yeah. lift it up a bit. Is that enough, or do you want more? Yeah, I'll do it all over. Oh, okay. The entire thing. That's it. So once once you've done this, put a little spritz of water on here. This means that this will kind of stay open a little bit longer and you'll be able to uh, work on it. You can get things like retarders, can't you? Oh, you that can, will. yes. Yes, they, they slow down the drying of the collar. Yeah. Um, of course, then you put in the chemical ingredients in there um, as well. Right. Uh, and water actually works pretty well. I've always just used water. Have I mean, you just to keep yeah. it wet and, and moving? Yeah, yeah, that's enough now, yeah. Jeez. See, we don't normally mix on the... on. We don't normally wet blend because I mean our, our techniques is we put a base color down, we then watch it go in, and we sort of highlight it up, you know, in, in stages so that wet mixing adding water. I mean, it works okay on a flat, so it should work okay on your ocean boards and stuff like that. But it does better thinking about: is it too much water for you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a bit much, a bit much. But uh, it's I'm not good. used to this. Now obviously yeah, the water nice. will thin it out and make it lighter, won't it? So you're just adding more paint in there and watch it sort of darkening it up. That's but right. you can see that sort of the stormy shade, can't you? Yeah, and it's already, you know, you don't have to put it on oops, brush is not there. Don't uh, worry. A, a bristle rather. Uh, you don't have to um you know get it absolutely dead even covering, absolute even covering because we want it all a bit kind of ropey because we're gonna then work into this. Right, so you're just uh, you're dragging more of that blue into the mix and a little oh, quite a bit more green. Yeah, and the black. Now the black should we should get less and less black as we go as we go on. So because obviously as we're going towards shallower water. That's right. Yeah. So as you can see, this is beginning to get a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And bluer. Nice. Uh, well, close to what's called an aquamarine color. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which really means green water, aquamarine, <laughs> <laughs> or sea water, I guess. A uh, bit more blue in that, maybe. Yeah. See, the blue is a lighter colour than the black or the brown or the green. Well, the green's about the same, but because it's a lighter colour, I can carry on adding blue into it and it's get bluer and bluer. But so, at the same time, you know, it's getting lighter as well. So it is the blue that you're using for the highlight by dragging it into that dark mix? That's right, yes. Yeah, I started off with the black, yeah. the green, uh, the brown and the, uh, and the blue there. But here it's just more of the green and the blue, a little bit of the brown. And not much of the black. There's a little bit of black in there, but not much. Now I'm reducing the amount of black because the black is for the depths. Right. And as the water gets perhaps a little, a little less deep towards wow. the, the end here, I can get it a bit. You can really deep. start seeing it going across from that that green over to the blue as you pour more and more blue in there. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's quite a nice aqua. What's called an aquamarine there. Get nice and neat around the edges. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Always a perfectionist. Yeah. Oh, that's quite a nice. Base coat there. Now that's all wet all over yeah. now. Just get some of those nibs out. Nibs? What's a nib? Uh, it was, well, it's my, my invented word for... Um, a blob of paint, a, a concentration. Of, a kind of like a brush mark I don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> now, what it's nothing worse than a dry brush mark on your terrain, is there? A clear dry brush mark? Right, yeah, so they, once it's, of course, once it's there, it's there. Yeah. Uh, you can always paint over it, of course. Well, we, we just um, hide it with clump foliage. What do you need, wash? Do you have a, yeah, yeah, a few more, yes, please. And you need a bit of tissue as well, I guess. Yeah. Oops. Of course, speed is of the essence with something like this because yeah. the more you can get it going while it's still wet, 
you but the easier the blending is. Yeah, you're looking at nice soft blends, yeah. So very quickly, yeah. Just a couple of colours, guys. Look, just <laughs> <laughs> looks a bit strange at the moment, aren't you? It's strange. It looks beautiful, mate. Okay, now I'm just wondering now which. Let's stay with the bigger brush. I think. All right then. And now we're going to put some modelling in. So this is the modelling. Yeah. Yeah, so this is going to be the ripples. Right, so you're getting that dark, your, your dark colours from this side, throwing a bit more brown. Wow, you are going dark. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be quite dark here. Because we I would have thought ripples would be lighter. That's a bit too wet at the moment, so we're going to have to wait for a minute. But yeah, yeah no, what I'd start off with is this, what you call a medium, well, you've got a base coat, and then you've put like a medium coat on here, which is yeah. like a ring going to the darker colour. Now I'm going to put a, a darker, half covering into the wet paint, uh, kind of ripply kind of effect okay. uh, with, with this darker colour because, you know, as waves um, catch the, or in their own shadows sometimes, so, so they, they have a shadowy effect. Once we've got that all done, then we can come in with the, the, the highlights on the top. The last thing is the highlights. Right, okay. So working always up from the dark to the light, from the darker colours, the base coat darker colours up to the lighter uh, highlights at the top at the very end. Right, okay. So I'm just waiting for this. Uh, to dry Try to blast it with the heater? Yeah, you can't do it. Give it a bit, uh, bit of a... Bit Old of school techniques. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheating, but never mind. <laughs> yeah. So and that's, it's good, good to get it nice and wet like this because then you, you've got a lot of sort of like, uh, you know, uh, leverage basically, a lot of manu room to manoeuvre. Well, one of our biggest challenges is, okay. is always blending it in, to be perfectly honest. Because yeah. we often, because of the, the amount of paint we put down, it's normally quite, what you call it, uh, it's normally quite an, an expansive area. So wet blending with terrain is quite challenging. But for your water effects, especially your rivers, your oceans, your ponds, these techniques work brilliantly because one, they tend to be smaller enclosed areas. They tend to be flat, okay, because we're putting resin and that sort of stuff over them. See, the gut of me goes, mmm, yeah, but the, the practical side of me goes, it's Fred, it's going to be fine. <laughs> well, the beauty of this is you can, you can add, you keep on adding to it. As the thing gets drier, it will get easier to do that, actually. Yeah? Seems to get a bit blue, doesn't it? Yeah, the contrast is a bit sharp there. Arc at me. Yeah. Well, actually, good contrast is, is, is something that catches the eye and gives, gives a sense of modelling. But... Uh, yeah, this is the point where don't panic, Mr. Manry. <laughs> <laughs> because because we're gonna work over this. This is just we're still We're working in layers, what he's basically trying to say. Modeling it, yeah. We're modeling it really. So that these colours will underneath that we've put on will show through. But a bit bluer. Yeah. A bit blue and green now, I think. So as you're moving up, you're also adding that blue and the green that you lightened on the base colour. I'm sorry? So as you're moving up towards the lighter area, you're dragging the blue and the green and lightening your ripples as well. Yes, the, the, rip, the ripples will obviously also get a bit, bit paler as, as we go along as well. And it's just basically following the, the line of the water, if you follow me. Yeah. Uh, it's nice and wet actually still, which is good for water. <laughs> um, so. You know, there's lots of like leeway in this to, to play around with it. You know, you can use your fingers as well, which I'm going to do in a minute. Well, we like getting messy, don't yeah, we, guys? Yeah. Well, that's half the fun, actually, with <coughs> painting is, is using your fingers. You know, I mean, your fingers are a good tool to use. Uh, just using brushes all the time is a mistake. Really? Uh, yeah, because you can quite often use the, you know, the flat of your hand or the, uh, the heel of your hand there. You see, the, color off and, and you see it's well. quite interesting with us, we very rarely do that because when we apply paint, it reactivates the PVA. So the material, because of the grit and that sort of stuff, sort uh, of becomes looser. So oh, you actually want to touch it as little as possible. Oh, now, okay. obviously, that doesn't apply to flat surfaces like rivers, ponds, oceans, so these techniques will work on those. But personally, from a terrain point of view, I wouldn't recommend smudging your... Then again, I did it on that one. And I went in with my thumb and I do smudge things off. If the surface will allow it without damaging it, then I definitely do smudge things with my fingers and that sort of stuff. Right, yeah. You don't want to do it on it, obviously, a textured surface. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you're going to pull, there's a bit of a bristle on there. 
because uh, you're going to pull, uh, you're going to pull, <laughs> you're going to pull the uh, the under texture off yeah. uh, with, with too much. There's all this story about the Sistine Chapel. You know, you know they um, repaired it, yeah, uh, renovated it rather a few years ago in the nineties, I think it was. Uh, Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, and the guys up on the scaffolding when they got really up close to it. Found that Michelangelo had left all the bristles of his brush in the in all the paint. <laughs> he hadn't taken his bristles out. Yeah, he just left them there and he, moved on. He left all the bristles. It was the sixteenth chapel. Uh, yeah, yeah, the sixteenth chapel. So, guys, if you see a bristle in your terrain, yeah. if Michelangelo can leave it on the sixteenth chapel, <laughs> don't fret about one on your terrain, okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> of course, it was designed to be seen one hundred and fifty feet from, from exactly. <laughs> he probably thought to himself, "Why well, get the bristles off?" Yeah, yeah. but uh, for us, obviously, we're a bit more close to uh or close to personal to what we're doing here so we need to be a little bit more finessing than michael actually yeah. Uh, yeah we don't look at terrain from 150 foot away that, that exactly no no so we're a bit, bit up closer to it yeah yeah oh that's looking nice so hang on a minute they're not quite there yet gradually yeah, so what you're doing now is you're just breaking up because that contrast to me was quite sharp but now it's yeah. thinning and you're dragging it out. I'm working it over. What I'm doing is I'm doing this with my fingers with the brush. So I'm taking, so the brush isn't overloaded. Yeah? Right. So uh, I'm taking some of the paint off the brush with my fingers like that. And then with what's left on the brush, and this is just beginning to dry out nicely. So it's just beginning to take a bit more. You see, as the paint, yeah. uh, sorry, as the water evaporates off, then we'll get a, a stronger kind of thing going. Um, but it's helping it blend because there's not much paint on the brush to leave those when you put a paintbrush down if it's loaded up what you get at the mm. sides of your stroke is you almost get like clumps of paint yeah. so it's thinner in the middle with two dark streaks along the line and that's one of the challenges when you're doing this sort of stuff but with fred taking the, the paint off his brush as he's as he's going back across and smoothing these out it's blending the edges in it's also you know you can train the brush into a shape like that with your fingers as you're doing it as well so not only are you taking off the excess paint off the brush but you're also kind of finessing the point a little bit. And yeah, so you, you're keeping more. that point. Yeah, yeah, keeping it as a nice sharp edge. And what I'm doing as well is I'm putting this on in an irregular kind of way now. You can you notice I'm beginning to join up some of these dabs up Yeah. But in other areas, I'm leaving some bits, like I've left a big area there. Which right. I'm, which I'm gonna leave. Um, because you should, they shouldn't be too regular. They, they right. Should be an irregular um, flicking of, of a darker color on here to, uh, it's a bit darker over there. And of course, when it sets up, it will look different again. You know, it yeah. will kind of all meld out and blend a little bit more because that technique of using a water spitzer, as I call it at the beginning, yeah. will, will actually help the water look like water actually when it dries, yeah. Right. So, may I? Again, you're not quite. Uh, not quite. Not ready just yet. The finessing is always the fun bit, actually, because you know you can see it kind of beginning to come together as you're doing it. Yeah, you can see your lines breaking up, and are getting a softer, softer rather than blobs on a collar. We're now beginning to get a mold. It's beginning to. If you weren't kind of wet working, melting. how would you get that effect? It would be very difficult without the doing the spritz of water first. It would be very difficult because it would drag and it would be dry. Yeah, you know, so, so you'd, you'd have those distinct you know, sharp lines. You'd have it too harsh. Yes, yeah, so it wouldn't look as soft as it should because with it being wet like this see with this kind of like brush that's getting less and less paint on it because i haven't recharged the brush at all what i'm just doing is working with this semi-dry brush well it's not dry but it's got yeah. paint on but it's not got a lot of, of paint on it it's quite a minimal amount so it's still putting a lot bit on but i can just feather out what's what i've already put down finesse it a little bit and weed it out into the into the the wet base coat i put on with the yeah. greenish Aquamarine. Now the one thing, go on. Let's begin to get there. Are you not concerned that with how light it's drying on the base coat with these colours? Um, it is drying a bit light, that's because we spritzed it, but we can always work in over and around these darker okay. colours uh, if we're not happy with it. So this, this is kind of like hitting it in the middle if you like, okay. and, uh, and that way you have leeway to push it both ways, you can get darker, lighter, whatever. We should probably put that to one side for the moment, let it dry. Okay, so right now what we're looking at, yeah. Now you can see those lighter marks mm. 
yeah, where we've thinned it down and we've gone over the light grey, and that's what we're talking about right now. Now, as always, you know, Fred knows what he's talking about, so I'm just going to go with it, because he knows what he's doing. Right, we're going to put this up for a second, okay, let it dry, and then we're going to come back to that, yeah, once it has. So, our piece has dried up now. That was bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, almost dried up, yeah. but there you are, there are the colours. And as you can see, mm -hmm. yeah, it's got that cold sort of, you know what I mean, Atlantic feel to Green, it. Greeny grey, yes. Yeah. So there's, there's a reason why they always painted battleships, that battleship grey. Because <laughs> it's that colour, yeah. It's close yeah. to that colour. But yeah, look at those colours. Right, Fred, you said we're not finished. Nope. Now, I should be saying that we are aware that the colours are a little light in places because of the way that we've worked with that watered down, that spritz that Fred's liked. Mm -hmm. We've thinned down the paint and obviously not made it so as concentrated, which is why they're showing through. The, the colours are still true though, aren't they? Yes. Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to use a, a, little, a smaller brush now for this. Uh, this is the finessing bit. Okay. Oh, excuse me. And um, see now. There's a few areas that are still a bit wet, so I'm just going to drag those out a bit. Because those are going to... They'll dry quicker if you drag them out, yeah? Yeah, yeah, they'll dry quicker that way, yeah, because they'll interfere with the highlighting otherwise. Right, okay. Right, that's almost done. Uh, with, with a lot of uh, painting, you don't always use paint on your brush. You know, sometimes you yeah. can dry brush. Yeah. Uh, which is taking the paint off with a dry brush and that can actually be quite useful because you can blend and feather and soften things. That's slightly different to our dry brushing, okay? Mm -hmm. We actually do have a little bit of paint and we use it to apply paint. Uh, Fred, because he works wet and because we, he works with oils, he would use a, a dry brush to take pigment off. Yeah. 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 Or to push it around. Yeah. To manipulate it. it. Yes. Yes. So yeah, with a, with a with a good open working time with with acrylic, you can do it with an extender. Yeah. Or, or with spritzing with water. Um, although we don't want to put any more water yeah. in now. <laughs> um, you extend your your working time, then you can keep on working it and working it till you're happy with how it is. Right. You know? Right. So okay. So we're going to start again with the darker area. Yeah. And I need a bit of white. Okay. For this bit. So Does it, yeah, I'll pass it here, it splats. <laughs> so so I'll go paint it closer. Well. Aren't, we, aren't, we, aren't we both, mate? <laughs> so it was a good idea to wear, you know, clothes that you have to throw away mm. <laughs> when you're painting because they do get covered in paint. I have a painting drawer of clothes. So do I. Yeah. Yeah. I have half a wardrobe, actually. <laughs> I, I won't throw away because they, they're not quite completely ruined. So we're throwing the white and the blue together. Wow, that's white and that's very white and blue. And a little bit of the brown. So what we're looking yeah. for here is is something we can speckle in, in between here. And then we can't get it too light. Yeah, because the contrast will be too much. Because it'll be too yeah, it'll be too too. Uh, it'll look too. So once again, the blue, a touch of the brown, a touch of the green. And then we'll put a bit more blue in. Yeah. More, even a bit more black. Just darken it down a bit. It's very intuitive the way I do this, as you can see. It, it, until it looks okay on there, I won't put it on here. Now, obviously, with you guys, uh, Fred's got a like you know a lifetime experience of this sort of stuff. If you're worried about, all right, Mel, if I want to do oceans, I want to use Fred's techniques, but I'm scared of cocking it up or anything like that. Dead simple, yeah. Just get yourself a little test piece. Play around with the colours so you get a feel of what they're like. Not only what they're like when they're dry, but what they're like with their wet and how they dry. Yeah? With a lot... Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I just completely thrown there. That's beautiful. Thank you. Well, I'm putting, like, a half-covering little yeah. kind of, like... I, I can't explain it, really. <coughs> it's like a, a very light, feathery touch. Yeah. Following... The dark waves I've already put in to a certain degree, you know, the dark ripples, I should say, and just putting like a little highlight in and a lighter colour, which I mean, it looks a bit harsh at the moment, but when it dries, should come out. Should darken it. down. Now, remember, guys, when paint is wet, it's lighter. That's because yeah. it's wet and therefore it reflects more light and seems brighter. When paint dries, it goes darker. 
Fred's got a lifetime experience of knowing how paint dries and that sort of stuff. Yeah, this is why I say do a test panel because that way you can actually see what the colors you mix look like when you actually apply them and then when they're dry as well. Yeah, I often do a try out myself. You know, I call it a try out. Yeah. Um, I get a bit of spare paper, a bit of spare canvas and I'll just put the core on there the way that I think it was going to go yeah. and see what, what it's like. And if I'm not happy with that, it doesn't matter because you can just throw it away. It's just a spare bit of, you know, um, canvas or paper. So it doesn't really matter. And that way, when you come to actually do the, the actual real thing, you've got the confidence to do it, you know, and you know exactly what you're doing pretty much. Yeah, because you've seen the effects, you know how it's going down, you know how it want, wants to mix. Yeah. And there's another little note. We did, when we did this, we, we obviously, you know, we sprayed it before, we, we did think it was a little bit thin. If you notice what Fred's doing is, Fred's actually going in between the dark uh, streaks that he put in, those ripples, where it's the lightest, and he's putting his highlights over to there, and he's basically making the thinned paint disappear. Yeah, yeah. Because and it's actually the thin paint has suddenly become like a mid-tone. That's right, yeah, yeah. The, you know, as it works through... See what I mean? Yeah. As it works through, even the, the bits that didn't look right before, you can get them to look right by this final this final touch here, because you can see where the paint has, like you say, gone on a little bit too thin, and those are the areas that you hit with your highlights because they're already highlighting themselves, if you want. Yeah, like. because of <laughs> where we thought, where we take it as a mistake. It, you know, we haven't got a solid base coat there. Yeah, Fred's just used it as, right, there's my highlight, and I'll throw a bit more light on it and carry it up and blend that in. Yeah. And... Well, it's basically it's using happy accidents, you know. Um, because... <laughs> oh, that's very Bob Ross, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, using the happy accidents to 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 follow. You know, once you've done that, you can kind of follow it through. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it usually works out quite quite well because I don't know what it is, but there's there's something about those happy accidents that make things work better than if you contrive it really carefully. You know, I, I think quite often. I mean, it's a bit like military camouflage. Yeah, yeah. When they teach you to do military camouflage, one of the key things that they teach you is don't make regular patterns. No. Yeah, be irregular, break it up. Yeah, it's got to be irregular yeah, and, and completely, um, what's the word? Uh, not not in a, in a formal kind yeah, of... Yeah, our brains yeah. recognise yeah. that. Yeah, and that's why when things are too set and too organised, it doesn't look real to us because we're like, no, nature isn't like that in the majority of cases. That's true, yeah. yeah. If you get it too kind of careful, then it begins to look contrived. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that, we don't want that. You know, it's, it's better if it's a little kind of... What's the word? It's kind of random. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, literally random. Yeah. Uh, and th like... there's, there's, a, there's an artistic principle of the principle of three, isn't there? Of balancing things, yeah. yeah, where you have three items. And what you'll do is always make sure that if you've got three items, they're always arranged in an irregular triangle. Right, yes. Yeah? Yeah, there's a natural kind of harmonies in nature. I was, I was, funnily enough, I was reading about water just the other day and the way that water is actually composed, you know, H2O yeah. is two hydrogen, uh, is it molecules or atoms? Two hydrogen, what you call uh, it? And one oxygen. It, it's hydrogen atoms, yeah, yeah they make yeah. the water molecule. Right, water molecule, I always get those atoms and molecules mixed up. But they are configured, apparently, unevenly. So each atom of water, the each molecule of water, the atoms are configured slightly differently so you get two hydrogen and one oxygen and then two hydrogen and one oxygen and then two hydrogen and one oxygen like that so they're, they're all slightly different and that's why water melts together and kind of like sticks together with itself but it, it, loop, get, it gets tangled like, in itself yeah because it's got a positive and a neg negative end each, so that's each, where, each molecule does so that's where water tension comes from water tension exactly yeah so that's why yeah. the skaters so you know the little the bugs can sort of go on the top of the water that's because it, yeah. the molecules are actually hooking into each other sort of temporarily because they're yeah. regulating yeah that's cool yeah. i love science stuff like that yeah, it's fascinating yeah and, and the beauty of doing something like this is you learn about nature you yeah. learn about the world you know you know I love learning. Now Fred's doing the same thing that he did with the what you call it, with the dark bits, where he's gone in with his light, he's let them dry, he's removed the paint from his brush, and now what you're doing is he's feathering out the edges and blending them in so they're not so harsh. Yeah, I'm doing that with the dry brush. Yeah. yeah. So it just takes off the the hard edges, which inevitably you're going to get one or two. Yeah. Um, which are a bit kind of unsightly. If they if they didn't want to go along like this. 
Could they sort of like do a filter layer over it as a way of blending it out? So sort of going in with a thin colour across the whole thing just to t bring it all together. You could do that like a glaze or a yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. You could do that. That's another way of doing it. Uh, there's lots of ways of doing this. What I've done it is what's called uh, the Italian. We'll call it alla prima. Alla prima. Alla prima. Yeah, which is where we get the word primer from. Yeah. Uh, alla prima just means in one go. Right. So what you're go. saying is you're you're tackling this as right. I start. I finish. It's done. It's done. Yeah. 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 Whereas not coming along and saying right. I set up the basis and then I'm going to come in with like a watered down blue put it over the lot and then that'll blend it in. Yes, yes, and then you wait for that to dry and then you can put a glaze over that and then a glaze over that and that's that's actually the opposite of, of our Prima. It's it's more consistent. Just out of interest, if you're interested in this glazing and that sort of stuff, because I slightly am, yeah, let me know in the comments and let Fred know in the comments whether you'd like us to look at it as a video. Glazing is interesting because you get uh, colour effects from glazing that you don't get from working directly or, yeah. or our Prima. Uh, or a la prima, <coughs> and uh, with a glaze you get like a uh, huge luminescence, you, you, a lot more light reflective yeah, yeah. Than, than straight painting is. Um, so that's the beauty of it. Of course you don't always want that, sometimes you want subtlety, you want yeah. you, know, uh, you don't want a, a brilliantly coloured terrain obviously, so you wouldn't want to use too much in the way Well, of unless you're a chaos player. Well, or <laughs> yeah, you do yeah, fancy you, gold. Yeah. Well, exactly, that's, you know, true, yeah. demonic worlds and magical worlds, they can be all colours, mate. That's absolutely true. Right, are we drawing a line on this for now? That's looking good to me, yes, for the moment. <laughs> for the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And if you'd like to buy these afterwards, me and Fred... <laughs> right, are we going to put this up now and then, what do you call it, come back to it when it's dry? The best thing to do is to come back to it when it's dry and then we can evaluate it. If it needs any more work on it, then we can evaluate it when it's dry. Because it, paint does <laughs> change when it dries. Yeah. So, so we need to leave it to one side. Yeah. We'll All right. On we'll, we'll be back in a quick flash. <laughs> Right, so, uh, what shall it? It's all dry, we're ready to finish it off. So, Fred, Here we go. yeah, final touches, mate. I mean, if we bring it up now, it's dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Fred's true style. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful, mate, absolutely beautiful. So, Fred. Thank you. Yeah. So, we're, all we're gonna do now is, uh, this is the temperate, North Atlantic, North Pacific. Yeah. It's a greenish, Color because of the you know the uh, yeah the algae material. and the bacteria. So what we're going to do now is just mix up another bit of a color which is going to be the highlight color. Yeah. So again we're going to use the the greenish blue which is cerulean blue. Yeah. And a little bit of the brown. You're so, not throwing any green in that, or you just? Yeah, you know, I was just thinking actually some green would be nice as well. And in fact, why don't I try that in a different mix and see what that does. The blue again. Decisions, decisions. Which one are you going to go with, Fred? I want to use both. Oh, all right. Of course <laughs> he is. Of course he is. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for that is because we've got highlights and we've got um, also this organic material in the water as well. So I'm going to start off the greenish. I'm yeah. taking off the, the bulk of the paint off the brush. So it's just got a, a minimal amount. And this is highlighting the ripples because obviously we need a greener colour for that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you for the reminder of the green because I would have just gone in with the blue and then wonder why I wasn't looking right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm getting are. there. Yeah, yeah. And this, you're basically going to work this the way down, right? Uh, in a kind of half covering Dibby dabby way, yeah, you know, like that, yeah. Sort of breaking up edges, breaking up spaces, that sort of thing. Yes, yeah, so again, I'm, I'm using the not too much color on the brush. It's there's some on there, but I'm allowing it to you know kind of go on in a half covering irregular yeah. kind of way like that. So not a full coat, if you know what I mean. More like a, yeah. a smudging, smearing that sort of. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Because uh, you get that. Yeah, you get it too like that's a bit too harsh if you yeah. don't take some of the colour off the brush first, yeah. Right, so what we'll do is we'll just watch colour very quickly swish forward because he's just doing this across the piece, yeah? So, we'll see you in a flash. 
So Fred, you, you've worked your way down there, but you're on about changing it now, so what's the battle plan, mate? Well, this is the greenish highlight that I've been putting in up to this point because these are the darker depth areas. Yeah. So more plankton. Yeah. More, more you know, um, krill. So, so there's going to be more discolour. But then as the highlights come up into the shallower water, we're going to have less green and a little bit more blue. That, that was very similar to what you actually did with the base colours, wasn't it? You put you pulled more blue into it to That's for the right, lighter yeah, area. You started off with a greener, greyer mix at that end with the deeper water and then as it comes lighter this So way, you're changing your highlights changing as highlights well as, as well, yeah. With the base colour. That's right, yeah. So the highlights kind of follow through the same way that the base colour did, yeah. Or, or a similar similar uh, colour mix. But much much obviously pale and a lot more white in it. Yeah. It's ninety percent white in fact really. Right. Right. Well, let him skip on and I'll just admire the two new pieces of artwork I'm going to be hanging on my wall. <laughs> it's just a question of like breaking up these. Yeah. You know, somebody once asked Monet, how do you know when a painting is finished? And yeah, that was such a good answer. He said, when it's finished and people who are looking at it can't tell how it was done. Yeah. Uh, and what's, such, yeah. what's such a good answer though? If it, yeah, if they can tell how it's done, it ain't finished. If they can tell how it's done, it's unfinished, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You should be able to fool the viewer's eye into not being able to figure out how many Do you find, what you call it, as an artist, when you look at a painting, mm -hmm. you look at the technicality of it, and oh, sometimes yeah. you struggle actually looking and appreciating it for the picture? Yeah, I can do that, yeah. yeah I, I struggle yeah, when yeah. I go to some places like there's, there's Warhammer World and they have amazing terrain sets. Right, yeah. Yeah, and right. I find myself drawn into the technicalities of how they've done it. Analyzing it. And yeah. I can't yeah. step back and truly appreciate it for yeah. what it is, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I do experience that. Yeah, my wife actually experiences art probably more directly and purely than I do. Yeah. Because I'm always standing there thinking, how do you do that? Yeah, how have you done that? <laughs> Well, I suppose it, it, it's it's very much the idea of it's your profession, isn't it? Yes. yes. You know what I mean? So, so a bit like a plumber or a builder, you see a job well done, you're trying to figure yeah. out how they did it. I mean, even yeah. as a physiotherapist, even now, yeah, I still diagnose people on the street when I see them walking. Well, yeah, I can you know? believe that, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you look at their gauge, you look at how they're carrying themselves, yeah, and your yeah. brain just automatically works through because yeah. you've done it so long professionally. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I was just curious. It's, it's true, yeah. to know you struggle the same way I do. Of course, yeah, yeah. Nobody's ever, you know, uh, you never get to the point where you can't learn anything else. It's just impossible. No, never, yeah, never. There's always something to learn. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The trick is is to to always remember that, you know, and, and not imagine that you know it all sort of thing. Yeah, and think that you've got nothing left to learn and no experiments left to do. Yeah, yeah. I it's... think that's why I like my terrain lab videos. Right. Because they are purely about learning. And this falls into this sort of remit. It's a bit like a terrain lab, but it's you guiding me, yeah, rather than me playing with stuff on my own. But it's the same sort of principle of, you know, we're along learning. Now let's have a look at it, guys. Right. Oh, Fred. Hmm. I'll tell you what, mate. Those colours are bang on. Yeah, it's beginning to get uh, I'm just going to stop doubting him. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to stop doubting him completely. Yeah. So, are we done with that, or is there anything else, or are you happy with that? Yeah, that's looking pretty good to me. Um, the like I say, you know, a coat of uh, thin acrylic uh, varnish. Yeah. Um, I think uh, we'll give it that wet look. Remember, guys, we'll you've got Modge Podge. We've got we. You got your two part resins and that sort of stuff. And and just to put this in context. All these sort of videos that we're doing with Fred, with Asher, and these in-depth colour ones are all going together in one direction, and that's for me to make the best ocean board, yeah, I can possibly do. We've pretty much nailed the what you call it, all the uh, tint colours. Yes. Yeah, we're messing around with resin with Asher. Fred with these is absolutely brilliant. So just give us a second, yeah, let's have a quick clean, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at both our works. It's not bad, not a bad mix. Actually, just a minute. Did we do this one first? Yeah, we started so not with both this one. our works. We're going to look at what was that one? That was the second one we did, yeah. Right, wait a second. 
actually, forget that. Marmel's getting a little bit confused, getting distracted by Fred's painting. Next off, yeah, because we're jumping backwards and forwards, we're tackling the what you call it, ah, uh, uh, what you call it, ah, uh, more warmer, more warmer tropical. Yeah, so we'll get cracked on after a swish. So that's our colder Atlantic sort of temperate zone colours done. It's temperate zone, it's not temperate zone, is it? Yes, yes. Temperate, North Atlantic, North Pacific. Right, okay. I was right then. All right then. Temperate, yeah. <laughs> so we want something a little bit lighter, a little bit warmer and a little bit sunnier. Fred, what have you got for us? Okay, so we're going to have a go at the, uh, what's called the tropical, tropical seas, which are the South Atlantic, the tropical Pacific of the Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean. Now these oceans aren't as nutrient rich as the temperate zones, which is the North Atlantic, the North Pacific. Um, so therefore we're going to be using a lot clearer blues. Uh, the, the, the water is clearer um, because there's less, you know, krell, less phytoplankton in it. So it's a lot bluer, it reflects the colour of the sky a lot more accurately than, than the North Atlantic, which does tend to grey down the reflective quality of the sky. So, as before, we need to uh, have a little light spritzer of, of colour. Okay. Of water on the thing. Okay, I'll um, do that well. And we need to select our colours. Right. So, Apologies for the, the compressor, guys. Yeah. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Take it nice and uh, evenly. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> Spitting out here, innit? Oh, God. <laughs> you see, this is what happens when you let me near terrain. Go on, Fred. No, you're okay. You're okay. Always feather it out with a, with a brush. All right. You should go for some better brush as well. <laughs> Will that do you? Yeah, that's perfect. All right then. And then back to our colours. Okay, so we've got the grey base coat. Yeah. Nice and wet. Now that's a Halford's neutral grey. Halford's neutral grey, yes, as a base coat. Um, and then we're going to go for the warmer colours. So we're going to have a warmer blue, which is the cobalt blue, I think. So we're going for a co cobalt blue. Um, this is the burnt umber, which is like a brownish brown. Uh, a uh, reddish brown? A reddish brown. I'm learning. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, so that's a warm brown. Now this one, I haven't got much of this left, so... Mm. Do you, or do you need more? Yeah, that's, that's more than enough, yeah. That's okay. Fine. And a little bit of black, of course, as well, for the depths. Yeah. Because, uh, obviously, the deeper the water, the darker it'd be. The darker it's going to get, yeah, because it's less mm. less reflective. Oops. <laughs> less reflective the deeper it is. So we've skipped the green this time. Oh god. Mm. We're already off to a bad just wipe it with that. It's alright, that's doesn't matter. We've all done it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as before we're gonna start off with a deeper, richer uh, deeper colour for, yeah. you know, for the depths, and we're going to imagine that as it's coming over to the, towards the, the right hand side here, it's going closer to the, the coast. Okay. You know, the continental shelf where it's shallower, yeah. so, so it's going to be deeper and then shallower. Okay, so, so very much color. like when we did that our first one. Yeah, exactly the same, yeah, really. We'll use the same kind of like, um, you know, method. Um, so we're not going to need any blue right now because we're doing the, this is the mid tone. Okay. A little bit of brown to break the blue. So that Desaturate it, make it more realistic. Yes, yes. There's very few pure colours in the world. Um, you very rarely get a pure blue or pure anything, really. So it's only actually written normally when it's the actual the minerals they make the pigments out of, isn't it? That's the only time in, in nature yeah. you tend to get really vivid colours. That's true, like ultramarine. Yeah, yeah. it's from lapis lazuli. Well, the real ultramarine is from lapis lazuli, which is a, which is semi-precious stone. Yeah. If you're wondering, you Minecraft players, yeah, that's the stuff you collect when you're mining. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it comes from Afghanistan. Yeah. Yeah, it's mined in Afghanistan. It's one of the few places in the world that can actually mine it. It's actually in a game as well, a computer game. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, so we've got no green in this. Agreed? No, I've cut the green out completely. You so can, you can have a little bit of green um, sometimes in the undertow of the waves because it's, uh, you know... Where it, it stirs that, the idea of stirring the, the right. material up yes. and that's going to change the colour. Right, yeah. Even even the tropics has some nutrients in the water, obviously. Um, but what we're going to do is that's going to be like a, a finishing touch in this particular example. Okay. Um, rather than in the, the very beginning because it's, it's it is less nutrient-rich than... Uh, 
than the North Atlantic or the North Pacific is. Right. You know, you should want to get whales and things in the North Pacific, you know, that people go there whale spotting, don't they? Because the, the plankton's there, the food's there. The, yeah, because the, they, the they, they, yeah, yeah, they, 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 they filter crawl. the food, don't they? They do, yeah, yeah. So that's why you don't get whales in like the Mediterranean and stuff like that. Yeah, you don't get them in the Indian Ocean there. No. Uh, if you do, they're way far out. They're well away from the land. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where there's, you know, what happens in the in the tropics, obviously, is that there's less kind of like um, turnaround, turnover from from the water from down below. So the nutrients in the tropics tend to stay at the bottom. Is more. there a reason for that? Is you know, does the water not swirl as much or something well it's, yeah because because it never cools down in the in the winter ah so you've got no real change of, of temperature so the colder yeah. water doesn't sink fit, throwing up all the, the stuff from the bottom well if they climb, that's right yeah so so everything that's that dies and goes down to the bottom stays there yeah the only time that is any different is when there's a storm and of course a storm will will mix kick up all sorts of weird yeah. colors yeah a storm will do that yeah so for the tropics and for um, you know, the temperate zones, storms will always make the water uh, a deeper, darker and greyer colour, um, simply because it does not only, you know, reflect the sky, which is going to be a deeper, darker colour, but also because it brings up the nutrients from below, yeah. the choppy waves and everything, and it makes it more soupy. Right. Uh, with all the organic material, which again takes the colour down from blue to uh, a somewhat sort of more organic, greeny, grey-brown, really. Now, I'm starting off quite deep here, because yeah. I realise that these colours do dry quite a bit light, especially on, yeah. this, on the water, on the spritzer. But as you see now, I'm going to get it a bit bluer and lighter. And this warm blue and the warm brown go beautifully together because they create this, it's almost like a purple, actually like a lavender grey purple. Yeah. Which is what we're aiming for. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah. I'm starting to really appreciate colours and this sort of stuff. Could get drunk on colour. You can get drunk on colour. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Because it's it's a delight to put it on as it goes on. You know, because uh, I'm mixing the colours quite freely, as you can see. Yeah. So we're getting a, like a mix of. You can work it forwards and backwards. And I'm putting it on quite slowly and carefully. I'm, I'm not rushing, because even though this is only a first layer, first coat. Yeah. It kind of matters at this stage to get it pretty pretty good and right. Because all we're going to do on top of this is highlights. So to line it up, what you're doing is you're dra dragging more blue into that mix. More and more blue, a little bit of the brown as well. But so so that it doesn't it. go, so you, you're keeping that desaturated look. It doesn't That's go back right, to that yeah. cr really crisp, clean looking colour. You very rarely <coughs> ever see, you know, anything in nature that's like a pure colour. You do occasionally. I, I've seen water that's actually pure blue and it's quite stunning to look at, but it's a rare so Your rarity, it's, yeah. It's, it's not a usual event, you know, it's not that. It's not what we expect water to look like. <laughs> no, and, and people say, well, maybe it's the pollution in the water, but actually it's more to do with just the natural organic material in it. Just floating around. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. There is some pollution, obviously, but, you know, we're, we're not addressing I mean, that, right? <laughs> you can get some really weird effects. I'm quite curious to you lot, because, I mean, I know you lot travel the oceans. I'm sure some of you do, and I'm sure, we, you know, it, the oceans look different. So let me know in the comments what's the weirdest sea you've ever seen, colour-wise. I mean, I remember when I lived in North Wales, yeah, yeah, and I remember a particular storm, yeah, and that made the sea, the sea almost went black. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it was really weird because it was one of those situations where it was light behind me, dark in front of me. Oh, yes. I yeah, so yeah. all yeah. the rocky features and everything on the headland were lit up really vibrant. Yes. And then had the sea behind it and the sky behind it was yeah. really dark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, in the uh, in the Odyssey, you know, the ancient Greek yeah. uh, novel, story, uh, I'll agree whatever it is, um, they describe the sea as wine red, the wine red sea. The wine red sea. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, like, strange. But, uh, yeah, uh, you can get... <laughs> color the, the color of the sea could be any color uh, at all actually depending on the color of the sky above it um again like i said at the beginning there we're keeping this as a kind of like a midday optimal yeah yeah kind of like average sort of like color effect or atmospheric effect and we've literally i've gone in dark here at the start by mixing in quite a lot of the brown quite a lot of the black with our blue and then slowly you've just added mm. more blue and a touch more brown each time that's right yeah, yeah taking yeah. it up that's right, yeah, yeah, now I've got a nice way in there, which is quite a soft gradation. Huh? Mm. Oh. 
from darker to lighter. There you go, guys. Wow, look at that. Look at the colours on that. Beautiful, mate. Absolutely beautiful. While it's still wet, we're going to do the same thing as we did with the other one. We're going to double double some some um, of the deeper. Right, you're going to create a bit of variation in yeah, it. The ripple effect, yeah, as I want to call it, the ripple effect. Yeah. So again, we're going into even deeper now with the blue, the brown and the black. This is where the black comes in a bit more usefully because we want quite a deep so you keep going and it's almost like you've gone a little bit too dark and actually no, you're going balanced from one to the other. Well, sometimes, you know, it's, you have to kind of like do it by feel almost. It's a bit too wet, I think, when you yeah. take it for a moment. I'll give it a quick blast, a quick back blast in a flash. <laughs> yeah. Right, and then we crack on. Yeah. So we're going to put these, these ripples in now. This, this kind of like as an indication of the undulating surface. Yeah. Because obviously as, it, as it, the water rolls like that, even on a fairly placid, placid flat sea, calm, yeah. a calm sea, you've still got this, this effect of, of undulation. So that's what we're going for here. So from a distance. Now, if they were doing an ocean board, could they, do they have to do this as ripples or can they do this as patches? Does it really matter? No, no, not really. It's just the way I, I, I'm, I'm kind of approaching it like this. There's, there's different ways that you could do it. You could put like this really deep colour on first and then you could work it up from the, the, the darker colour up to the light. And that's the what top. we'd normally do. Base coat yeah. in the deepest colour, deepest then go in either yeah. dry brushing or with an airbrush or something and add lighter patches. That's right, yes, yeah. But there's no specific need to do it as ripples as such. You, we could just like, I could do darker patches to get the variation. It's the variation that matters. That's right, yes, to get the, so it's not flat, you know, uh, so it looks like it's made up out of an undulating... Yeah, variation. ...kind of surface, yeah, it's just with lights and shadows. So, you know, the little kind of undulations, it, not even waves, but just like the rolling sea basically creates these, these, these dips and then highlights, you know, because uh, it rolls and with the currents, with the uh, the winds. Of course, the winds and the sun affect the currents and affect the waves. Um, everybody knows that the wind affects uh, the current, but apparently the sea does as well. Not exactly sure how, but apparently it does. And then again, there's people who do this as like degrees and stuff like that. Oh, it's complicated. Yeah, yeah. But it's interesting about the thermocline and all that because uh, it does give a reason why why the, the oceans are a different colour. Yeah. You know, it's a tangible, logical and, and you, rational you know, reason, yeah. I quite like this, the churning up idea. Yes, the idea that, yeah. you know, it's clearer because there's less stuff and it's getting less churned up unless there's a storm. Yes, yeah. Well, because the water in the tropics tends to be somewhat stiller and less, you know, choppy. In yeah. The North Atlantic and the North Pacific, they tend to be a bit choppier and a bit more, you know, uh, stormy. And just to be clear, as you're moving into the lighter areas, you're throwing a little bit more blue into your mix to, right, to lighten yeah. up your ripples as well. Yeah, the, the ripples themselves are also getting a little bit more blue, a little bit less um, black. And that way they'll look like, you know, like modelling basically. It's yeah. like really creating the, the illusion of modelling. Um, and it will work. Um, Especially if you know you add other elements to it, but like I say, this is just the intermediary stage right now. I'm just playing with it. Yeah. And uh, it's always interesting because these things always come out differently every time you do them. There's no, there's no formula, really. You do it by eye. Keep on adding a little bit more blue. Do it by eye. If if you put the colour on and it doesn't stand out enough, or there's not enough contrast, then just put a little bit more black in it. You do really mix on the fly, don't you? And just yes. adjust as you adjust. Yeah, it seems like so unnatural that, yeah. coming from how we've done. Because I mean, quite often we pre-mix our paints. I, I do that as well when I'm doing a painting. I will, I will pre-mix the paints. Uh, with acrylic though, um, with oils that's a little bit easier because then you've got you know, yeah, you've got pre-mix yeah. colours. With acrylics, you have to be, you have to, as they say in the textbooks, work with some dispatch. <laughs> <laughs> work with some dispatch. Go on, explain that one. I've never well, heard that before. Well, just do it quick. <laughs> all right, yeah, all right, because you haven't got the working time of oils. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to uh, roll it in quite quickly. But that's actually a good thing because you can get spontaneous. It stops you from being too kind of picky, you know. And, and don't worry about mistakes because really there aren't any mistakes in this. Um, you can carry on adding, subtracting. You can wipe it off with your hand. 
Like I say, you can use the flatty hand yeah. there to get a softer effect. Obviously, I'm not going to do that here because we want a uh, nice bit of contrast. Now, what I'm doing now is I'm going to do that same thing as I did with the other yeah. one. I'm going to start taking shaping the, it. Yeah, taking the paint off the brush with my fingers like that. And you have to be prepared to get mucky yeah. doing it. And just to blend them, blend yeah. those edges. Yeah, this is called feathering. And what I'm doing is I'm just feathering out these these blobs of darker colour I've put in here so they're not quite as harsh and they're just softer. So they look like an undulating surface yeah. rather than paint on paint, you know. Now this is what we did with the watch colour, the temperate one. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly swish forward while he does this, save us some time. Right, so Fred's finished with his ripples and just look at that. Look at the colours. Now you can see where it's darker on here. Yeah, and then as he's added the more of that watch colour, that was, what blue was that? A cobalt blue. Cobalt blue, a warm blue, isn't it? Yeah, it's a nice warm blue, almost like it's a purplish blue, yeah. Yeah, it's a reddish but blue. you also watch it through in a little bit of brown to keep that desaturated look so it didn't get too vivid. So it's not too blue, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. But wow, look at that already. Yeah, everything in the world is is, is kind of like, the colour of everything is counter-affected by something else, whether it's atmosphere or the light or, or, or nutrients in the water. You know, so there's very rarely a pure colour of anything, mm. um, anything like that. Right, uh, it's almost like he does this for a living, isn't it? <laughs> right, we're going to let this dry and we'll be back in a quick flash just to continue it. Right, so our piece has dried and if I just very quickly bring it up. Yeah, we were worried about the actual whether it was what did we say we were worried if it was going to be too light because it was thin with that spritzer of water but mm -hmm. even without doing anything more than putting the ripples on it's already not back when it's dried mm -hmm. but we're not done yet are we Fredicus? Yeah. No this is the fun bit. Oh I like <laughs> the fun bit right okay there's your palette what colours do you need Fred? Okay so I need a bit more white. Yeah I can do that for you. Yeah a bit of white. And anything there. else? No no we're still using the same colours that we did everything else with. Do you uh, normally work off such a limited palette? Yes. Do you? You prefer um, like getting your core colours in? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's one of the basic rules of the game basically is don't ever have th uh, a palette of thousands of colours because basically you just get confused and sometimes all you need is, is four or five colours to get most effects. You know? uh, there's certain basic colours you use all the time. Others that you hardly ever use at all. I'm not saying the <laughs> war games companies, yeah, have got something they need to talk about. Yeah, but yeah, war games companies sell paints in every shade. And to be truthful, it is actually a downfall because I've been a hobbyist for 20 years now, in fact, longer than 20 years now. I've been painting, I've been doing terrain. Mm. And it's taken me to this stage to actually learn properly about colours. Mm. Yeah, and that's because of this stuff because we've, we've been literally got used to literally dipping in yes. and picking the colour we need and being told, this is your base colour, this is your highlight. Whereas Fred is like, no, where's your white? Yeah. Well, what we're doing is we're basically making those colours from the basic constituent parts. But you give, it gives you more, more control over it, doesn't it? it? So much more, more control. control. Far more control and, and uh, you can get more creative with this as well. Mm. Uh, and on top of that, if you're using just basic colours like this to get mixes to do things like this, you can mix these colours together without getting kind of like a muddy brown colour. Whereas yeah. if you're using secondary or tertiary colours like yeah. those, if you mix those together with each other, you can never tell what's going to happen. Right, just to know. explain this for you, and I did go over it in the types of paint video. What we're using here are pure colours, yeah. i.e. they are... The, the colour you've got is the colour that of the pigment that went into the medium. Yeah, yeah. With house paints and this sort of stuff, these are what's called composite colours. Yeah, these yeah. are made up of a mix of these and you don't know what's in it. Right. Okay, quite often I have a grey and if I water it down, yeah. I get a strong purple out of it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. now you yeah. can't see any hint of purple in the grey as a matte colour, yeah. but when you start yeah. to thin it down, you get that purple. So if I mix that with something like blue, I wouldn't be mixing grey in, mm. I'd actually be mixing purple in with it as well, oh, which is yeah, why yeah. Fred's going, you end up with a muddy brown, because when yeah. you mix lots yeah. of different colours, yeah. you get what essentially a dirtying of the water, a desaturation yeah, yeah. to brown, don't you? Yes, yes, if you've got too many pigments all in one mix, then it will reduce itself to a kind of like a muddy brown colour, yeah. which 
Well, I should paint him what he... I don't know if you uh, paint but that's absolutely <laughs> fine, you know what I mean? But, but you know, uh, in most instances, obviously for water and stuff like that would be very undesirable. Yeah. So, so you need to keep your colours crisp, clean and pure. Yeah. And using the base colours like, you know, burnt umber, cobalt blue, these are the base colours that the secondary colours all mixed up yeah. from that you buy in the pots, you know. So, very yeah. quickly, if you are going to get pre-mixed paints, house paints for doing your terrain and you want to start doing this mix, Having a play with it as a test piece is even more important because yeah. that blue, yeah, isn't that blue. That blue is a mix of things. And looking at it, I'm going to hazard a guess and see if Fred gets me right. I'm going to say that's blue and brown and a dark brown. It's cobalt blue and uh, yes, a warm brown. There you are. So yeah, I'm getting really good. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of books of his I've been reading, you wouldn't believe. Right, Fredicus, come on, let's make it beautiful, man. Yes, well, now we're just going to put the, this is the fun bit, we're going to put the highlights in on the, uh, where the, 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 the parts of the ripples that are catching the, the, the light um, are going to be in operation. So, like I say, this is, this is a nice fun bit. So we're going to mix the cobalt blue with the white. Yeah. Like that, a little bit of brown. Because again, just a touch. We're going to start at the dark end, which is the deeper water, and come up to the lighter, uh, lighter yeah. water, which is the shallower water. Of course, the continental shelf at the centre and the Atlantic, uh, the, uh, the Atlantic trough, the Pacific trough in this case. Oh uh, yeah, Pacific, yeah, <laughs> yeah, at uh, the other end. So it's tricky getting this right. Okay. Strange. You've got to get it right, otherwise, yeah, we're, we're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> <You're true. laughs> but uh, it is tricky getting it wrong. Just about the right colour, a bit more blue. Because now this is the trough. Is the reason water. you haven't just thrown a bit of white into your what you pre-mixed before? Because you've started off and you've gone, right, I'll get blue, I'll get a little bit of brown, I'll get white, and I'll mix my next colour. Sure, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. No, the, the reason for that is because that's already a mix, so that's already a secondary colour. Right, so going back to what we were just talking about, composite colours, because more, there's yeah. already, yeah, if you start yeah. throwing more in, you're scared about it going brownie. If you put the white in there, then you might not get exactly the, the, the crisp, clear colour that you've got. So you, you, you've right taken there. your clean pigments again, set yourself up with a colour. Remixed it. Right, got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, with... with, with Blue, brown, and white, but there's very little brown. See, there's more brown in that. There's yeah. There's less brown in that. There's yeah. more blue and white with just a hint of the brown. And theoretically, it should be the right colour. <laughs> so I see. So we, we again try this oh, look at that. skipping white. Yeah. Working in between the ripples. And you'll feather that out again, just like the other, because I mean, it's quite a, a strong contrast. Yeah, remember, guys, wet paint is brighter. Okay, yes, so yes. you know, yes, it, will, it, it will dry down, you know what I mean? It will soften. Basically, the paint actually softens as it dries and it will come. Softens? Kind of, yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll blend in with the, with the ah, stuff right. that's underneath a little bit. There you go. And it's just a question of like a nice feathery. I'm using, I'm using a flat brush here and I'm taking some of the, yeah. the paint off. So it's nice and flat and I'm using a horizontal movement like that working back on myself like that, forwards and backwards across like that. And it's okay if it drags out a bit, but what I'm doing is, I'm, like, like Mel said, I'm, I'm finding the areas that have come out a little bit lighter. Yeah. And I'm just... So using where we've got the light in between, you use a dark to darken that down, now you're going in between and you're filling that gap and you're breaking it up again. That's right. The beauty of doing it this way is the streaks are random. Yeah. Uh, so if you highlight the, the random streaks, then you, you obviate that, that contrived feeling that you might get if you just... So you're keeping you it random. So yeah, yeah, I'm keeping it random. I'm looking for those areas where, in between the darker areas, where the where the, the base coat that we put on, yeah, or the first coat I should put on, not the base coat, where the first coat we put on, um, is it went on a bit thin. That's, that's fine because this is where we use that accidental quality to highlight. Put it more yeah. There. So basically use it as a mid-tone instead of a base coat. Yeah, but it's, you see it's suggested itself through the very technique of doing it. Yeah. So I'm not actually contriving it, I'm just following what the paint is Yeah, it's giving saying. it your this and you're, you're rolling with it. I'm rolling with what it's already done accidentally, yeah. Now Fred's just going to put some more streaks on here, so what we'll do is we'll just have a quick flash and then we'll come back, yeah, once he's actually got his streaks on. Right, Fred's finished off and what you call it, it's all dry. And look at it. Now, it's quite important to note, and I only just sort of realised this now, but this isn't an aerial view. This is a view from the headlands of painting the oceans. Mm -hmm. And 
Now, what I mean by this is Fred's a landscape painter, yeah? He's used to painting views, so he's imagining it very much. You're imagining it sort of looking off from the, the sort of headland, whereas we, mm -hmm. if we were doing yeah. oceans for our yeah. gaming, we'd be looking more reconnaissance, you know, aircraft sort of aerial shot. Looking down, yeah. Yeah, which is yeah. why earlier I was talking about patches and it doesn't have to be ripples, <laughs> because I was looking at this as a vertical shot, you know, straight down. Oh. And Fred's looking at it as a horizontal shot. Mm. When you put it in context of a horizontal shot, yeah, it literally does all fall into place. You can see the waves. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, so it works really well. Mm. Now, this doesn't mean what we've covered here is not of any use to you because all the colours are of use and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It just means that you may change your application to a more spottier one or something like that. Right, yes. So, Fred, we've got it to this stage. Is there anything else we can do with it? Well, the final highlights, um, where the sun's glinting on, yeah. the, uh, on the ripples, and also uh, the idea of uh, a bit of sea foam as well. Yeah. Uh, so we're getting a smaller brush. It's, uh, I've worked from a bigger brush <coughs> down to a medium brush, and now I'm working yeah. on this just really small one. And this is going to be almost pure white. Yeah. But perhaps just a little bit of that blue left in it as well, because we don't want it completely pure white. And this is going to give a sense of glint yeah and lively it up a bit so again i'm using my fingers yeah take off the excess yeah it was, it's a mistake to have too much paint on your brush at any time um because then you can't control where it, where it goes unless you're obviously painting a large area and then it's fine but uh, with something like this you need to uh, really have a fine touch yeah just a little bit yeah Right, with that in mind, we'll let Fred crack on with this and we'll be back in a flash. Beautiful, mate. Absolutely beautiful. So, always the finishing little squiggly touch. Yeah. Finish, not perfect, Fredicus. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing that thing I, I do where it's like, no, just a little, no, just a little bit it needs, right. 10 hours later. Yeah, right, I'm gonna have to put a stop to this man now. Right, so Fred's done his highlighting with his very light blue. Yeah, yeah that's it. and if I bring it up. That's just to catch the, uh, where, where the light is catching the water, uh, because it does have a you know, reflective quality. Absolutely beautiful, yeah. And remember, Fred's done this with a very limited palette. Yeah, with this one, we've used just purely, uh, what do you call it? This was Cerebellum, wasn't it? Cerulean. Uh, so, Cerulean, yeah. yeah, we'd used a warm, what do you call it? So that was Burnt Umber. Yeah, it's burnt yeah umber. and we'd used, what do you call it? Uh, white and black, obviously. That's it, but yeah. yeah. Our, our two main colors were Oh, no, 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 cobalt. Cobalt, sorry. Right, yeah, the cobalt. Yeah, cobalt, not... With those two. Yeah, cobalt yeah. and burnt umber, yeah. And then just white and black to create all those colours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Now, those are the colours perfect for your ocean boards and that sort of stuff. So you've got your colour palette. We've already sort of discussed composite paints and all that sort of stuff and mixing, so you should already have a lot of techniques. Now, obviously... That's beautiful, but we've got two boards to do. So our next board is going to be more tropical, isn't it? No, no, we're doing Atlantic next, aren't we? Yeah, this we're tropic, to, yeah. To Atlantic again, then. Yeah. So we're going to tackle something like the Atlantic and. So we finally come to the end. Yeah, I have had an absolutely brilliant day with Fred. I've learned so much and hopefully guys, you have too. Now, side by side, we've got our two pieces. We've got our Atlantic colors. Yeah, made with those what, cold, no warm. I uh, know the Atlantic colors are all cold. Yeah, uh, Atlantic cool, colors cool, are cold, colors. of course they are. Green, cool yeah. brown, cool blue, and black. Yeah. Only a touch of white. And then we've got our Mediterranean colors over here, which are our warmer colors. So our warmer ready brown. Yes, yeah. Brown, uh, brown, brown. That blue, I still can't uh, pronounce. No, no, cobalt, cobalt. So I will get there. I will get there. <laughs> but yeah, Fred's put all that together and what you call it, given us two absolutely awesome sets of colour. I mean, seriously, mate, you can hang these on your wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, I, there's a good chance I'm probably going to. <laughs> yeah. 
but the colours on these are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. There you go. Thank you. No, they genuinely are, mate. And what really gets me, yeah, is obviously Fred's got Fred's one of these. We're Google people. Fred's one of these reference photos, and he's got thousands of photos. Mm. Yeah, and so. I've got to say, Fred, you nailed those. <laughs> now, obviously, is it what? Well, what else would you do? What, is there anything else you can do? Because I mean, we've talked about coral and light patches and coastal things. Mm -hmm. So that I'm imagining there's all sorts of colours you could throw into this sort of stuff. Yes, these are only two really basic things. We're, we've been using uh, what, what you might call uh, the optimal uh, view for yeah. uh, tropical. Subtropical and temperate water. So you go uh, to method for these waters then? For, for kind of like the middle of the day, the middle of the year, you know, obviously it's going to be a little more varied if you're going to do a winter scene. Yeah. And you need to actually put a little less green in the blue for the North Atlantic and the temperate waters because they obviously it decreases in, this, in the winter a little bit. Right. Um, so I don't know if you ever noticed, but the, 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 the wintry water tends to be a little. Uh, it's but still, a little it's, bit it's, less green, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's still greenish, but there's a little bit more blue in it. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. So and that's winter, down to that. It's colder, there's less of that uh, algae and all that sort of that's stuff. That's correct, yes. yes. Yeah, because yeah. it's the algae that gives it the green touch. Yeah, the, 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 all the, the phosphates, the nitrates, the, uh, you know, the, the phytoplankton, the corel, all those, all those microorganisms in the water actually change the colour of the water significantly, yeah. yeah. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Right, first off, I've got to give a massive thank you to our Frederick Phillips. Yeah, now Fred does have a YouTube channel. I'm going to throw a link up on the screen. Yeah, go give him a sub because he's he does all his pet. You just go give him a sub, guys. You know what I mean? You know why you need to give him a sub. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. But yeah, and uh, to be truthful, I'll be helping Fred with his YouTube channel, so there will be more videos coming along on that as well. Yeah, uh. Absolutely beautiful, yeah. More information for us to soak up. Now, if you are enjoying these videos and me grabbing a different artists and pulling them in, especially Fred, yeah, because we've learned so much from Fred and I've learned so much from Fred. Remember, guys, yeah, that uh, this channel is supported by you guys. So we need your ideas of what you'd like Fred to cover and, you know, I normally do this bit at the end, but if you really want me to help me get our extra artists on, then we are trying to encourage you to hit a pledge level on Patreon. So have a look at that. I've, I've kind of cocked this, but my, 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 my outro up. I don't normally do it in this order. It's with having you here. Yeah, so completely off the cuff. So what I'm going to do is just, well, Fred, thanks. Absolutely awesome, mate. More than welcome. Yeah. Guys, massive thank you to Fred. As always, like it, share it. If you've got any questions, down below in the comments. I'm here to answer them. Fred will nip in and have a nose as well. Remember Fred's channel. Also, obviously, if you do like it, if you do want this content, yeah, guys, please consider supporting the channel. I rely on you guys who make it to the end of these two-hour videos. <laughs> yeah. It's a good one. Yeah, but I rely on you guys to sort of make this happen. So the links down below to the patron, yeah, for a one-off dollar a month for a dollar a month. Yeah, or you can go for a one-off via PayPal and just send, you know, a couple of nuggets. Or what you call it, there's the Amazon wish list if you'd like to get me a better raw umber. <laughs> yeah. And in the meantime, yeah, it's good night from me. And uh, it's good night for me. Later guys. Ta-da. Bye-bye now.